DC, there is some huge, huge news developing at the very top of the UFC's elite. Let me explain to you what's going on here. I don't know if you've been following all of this, but did you see where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Saturday afternoon, Jorge Masvidal says, let's run it back. Did you mm -hmm. see this? Masvidal says, let's run it back. And at first I was like, man, he wants to run it back with Ben Askren. I mean, that was kind of one-sided, you know what I mean? With all due respect. The oh, and then Bro, I was like, you're oh, you're constantly course. taking shots at Ben, dog. It's bad. <laughs> you constantly taking shots at Ben Askren, bro. I just, you... I was surprised. It was like such a quick knockout. But then it occurred to me that he had the great fight against Nate Diaz. I was like, wow, Nate Diaz, we want to run it back with Nate Diaz. What happened with Kamara Usman, right? Mm -hmm. I'm being told right now, negotiations aren't going great for that fight now who's to blame who's at fault unclear negotiations aren't going great for that fight so it seems as though jorge masvidal is saying you know what i'm out of here i'm turning my attention to nate diaz then all of a sudden i want to get your thoughts on this in a second then all of a sudden uh we got usman's manager ali abdelaziz telling brett akamoto hey if that's true we're going to fight connor for the belt right and then when you start to think about the whole situation, if Nate and Masvidal are linking up and Usman is left on the island, I mean, could you really justify giving Conor the title shot? It seems like a stretch. You've got guys like Leon Edwards and Colby Covington and the winner of Woodley Burns out there. Then you got a situation where Gaethje and Habib appear to be matched up. We're turning to July. Conor's without a dance partner. There's literally no one there that makes any sense for Conor McGregor, which is crazy, the biggest draw in the game. So first, let me ask you about the Masvidal Usman thing, because this is a crazy thing brewing here. This is a real mess of a situation. How do you feel about Masvidal saying, you know what, Usman, I'm out of here. I'm turning my attention to Nathan Diaz. So what I think is, you know, I think Jorge Masvidal has become such a star, right? The, the BMF title, and he knocked out Ben in the way he did. He had such a phenomenal last year that he should be fighting for the belt. Now, most times, when you're a guy that's about to challenge for a belt, you don't reach the level of stardom that Jorge has now reached. So when a guy reached that level of stardom, he wants to be paid in that way. And I think for the risk involved with him taking the Kamaru Usman fight, he probably wants to make the money that shows the risk. But then reality is, as a company... Does that investment warrant that type of price? You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what you have to weigh in. You know, you go into a Jorge Masvidal, Kamaru Usman fight, right? You pay a guy X amount of dollars. I think when the line would open up, Usman would have to be the favorite to win that fight, right? So then if Usman wins the fight, now you've given this guy all the money and uh, he, kind of, he loses to Usman, he kind of goes back to being... You know, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? I get it. So I think, I just think that in terms of the hype of a fight, Usman Masvidal should be the fight. That would be the best one. I don't want to see Conor fight Kamaru Usman. I don't want to see that fight. Why not? He's too big. He's so big. Usman and is. Usman's so big. And, and, and not only so big, he's so skilled and tough, man. Like, I, I learned a lot about Kamaru Usman in the Kobe Covington fight. I, every time people talk to me, and I like Usman. And they, I would say stuff about him, and he would ask me about him. And I'd say, you know, I love Usman. I think he's great. But to this point, he's been able to dictate every single exchange of every single fight, right? When it gets rough, he takes him down. If he doesn't want to take him down, he stands and he beats him up. He hasn't had to deal with any adversity. He's been that good. But Covington dealt him a lot of adversity. And he went through that and showed just how absolutely tough and durable he is. I thought Kobe was an issue because of the cardio, the pace, the pressure. Usman matched that. And exceeded it to finish Kobe, who himself is just a phenomenal fighter. And I just think that all those questions that he answered in that fight with Covington tells me, man, it's going to be very difficult to get that belt off of him for a lot of people. It's He's good, man. And if that physical ability is matched by that mental toughness he showed in the Covington fight, I just don't know if there's a tougher fight for him in the division than Kobe Covington right now, just in terms of matchup. Well, yeah. I, see, I want to see the Masvidal fight. Um, mm -hmm. They've got bad blood. They've got the the run-ins in the past. They talk smack. And I just think it's an interesting fight stylistically. And I think it's a great story that after 18 years in the game, Masvidal gets it's a chance a to fight for yeah. the belt, right? So we're all, we're all getting excited. We're moving in this direction. And now we've taken a left turn. And I can't get over, to be honest, I can't get over the hypocrisy of Usman's team saying, oh, Connor has to win 10 fights to be in the conversation with Habib, but we're going to give 
Connor, a welterweight title shot when you've got guys like Colby, Leon Edwards, Tyron Woodley, Gilbert Burns out there? Come on. I How do you justify you, this? I think when you talk to the managers, Ariel, like when you're talking to a manager, right, you're talking to Ali, he's speaking to the specific client, right? He's speaking to the specific client, right? Maybe Kamaru Usman does not have the same issue with granting Connor a title fight as Habib has. You know what I'm saying? What if what if the fight and the build? Okay, but Habib Usman as a champion has a responsibility, right? Yes, I understand. Beyond but I'm saying yes, Kobe. he does. He has a responsibility as a, as, a, as a champion. But what if he hasn't gone through the build with Connor? What if the build between Habib and Connor was so like bad and all the bad energy that Habib felt all the jumping over the cage? And all, he's like, I don't want to deal with that anymore, right? And he's got money. Habib's making so much money now. It's like, you know, he doesn't really need that fight anymore. Whereas it would by far be the biggest fight for Usman financially. But again, like I said, you have to remember, you're talking to the specific client. Kamaru might be like, yeah, I'll fight Connor. He might see it as a smaller guy. Yeah, uh, of course. Why can, wouldn't you take that I fight? can take him down. I'm going to make more money. Like, it's all those different variables, you know? It's all those different variables. And again, you know, I, I think that when Ali's doing these interviews, he's speaking to the specific client. It's not... Well, we just don't like Connor. He has to win ten fights. He maybe Connor doesn't have to win ten fights to fight Justin, because they don't have that 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 background. I think it's specific to Habib and specific to Usman, specific to Justin. So you got to think like in terms of like just overall, not in terms of individuals, not just overall. Yeah, but they made it so personal that it just seems a little funny that all of it's a sudden very like, personal. It's personal with all of them though. But, exactly. So then if you're going to try to block him out, block him out. Don't say I'm going to go for the money grab. Because- but that's but that's what but then again, like you can't if even if Ali and Connor or Ali and Habib have an issue with Connor, that can't cause issues for Kamar Usman and his financial viability. You can't allow those those you can't allow whatever types of issues you have with one person affect what you do for your other client. Like Ali has, Ali knows that, right? As a businessman, as a manager, he knows that he has to Take care of the guy. Oh, okay. So what you're trying to say is Ali isn't the type of guy to use an issue that he might have with one person and oh, extend no, it no, across no. his entire I'm management not team. That. I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that <laughs> because that but, sounds. What, listen, I get familiar, it, but I'm know, talking like it doesn't bother Kamaru Usman and his ability to earn a living. You know what sure. I'm saying? Like it doesn't getting him the Conor McGregor fight would make a ton of difference in the lifestyle he gets to live. And I think his manager has to understand that. So you've got a fascinating like jigsaw puzzle here. Yeah, you've got crazy. names like Masvidal, Usman, Nate Diaz, um, uh, Conor McGregor, mm-hmm. Justin, Habib. They're all entangled. In the this reality match. is the reality is like if things, if things work out the way it's supposed to, you have Conor, Nate, Habib, Justin, Usman Masvidal. That's the way it should Connor, be. Connor, Nate, Habib, Justin, Usman. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be, right? right. That's what should happen. I don't think it's going to happen that and way. I believe, and I believe, right, Nate Diaz warrants a ton of money, but he, he mm. should. It's, he's Nate Diaz. He doesn't ever have to win a title. He does warrant that money. And I think Masvidal is getting to that point where he does command a big sum. But does he command uh, the amount of money to make more than the champion? You know, I don't know what Kamar Usman makes, but, you know, like, how, how do they come to terms? I mean, if Jorge Masvidal, though, was able to complete this whole thing and become the UFC champion, he'd be a global superstar. Like, people would not be able to touch him. The whole Scarface thing and just knocking mm. people out and fighting as well as he had. I mean, I knew Nate would have a tough time with him. His striking so good. But if he can become a UFC champion, he, he would go to the moon because he's got everything. He's got the look. He's got the personality. He can be a star. He's already a star, but he could be a real star. And like you said, you know, fighting for the belt after all this time. I think he fought Gil Melendez for the Strike Force title, though. No, I mean UFC day. title. UFC First title. UFC title. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's kind of you know the crown jewel, right? Mm-hmm. I think you would agree with that. I'm really curious to see how it plays out. I'm also curious to see what they come up with for July 11th, because July 11th, I know it's not going to be your typical international fight week, but still, I think everyone is programmed, Mm -hmm. you know, to to think that that like show in early July is a big one. Here we are, May 25th, the clock is ticking, right? And I know the standards are a bit different. Like we're we're literally announcing cards like a week out now because things are so crazy. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen July 11th? Will this be Fight Island? Will this be Connor's return? If it is Connor's return, who's he fighting? You know, is there a chance? I'm not ruling this one out, DC, and I want to get your thoughts. Where's Jones? 
I will get to Jones in a second. I'm not ruling this one out. I'm not ruling out Connor versus Justin. And then the winner fights Habib in the fall. Obviously, Habib's going through some personal things and we want to continue to wish our best to him and his family. And, you know, it's been a very trying time for him. And who would blame him if he wants to take a little more time? I'm not ruling out Connor versus Justin. How about that? I think it's I think more likely Jones would fight than Connor versus Justin. I think that they're going to save the Justin versus Habib fight. I think that's the fight to make. I think that um, it's going to happen. You know, Habib's still training through all this, right? Like through Ramadan, through his father's issues. Every day he's training. He's still working. You know, he's a professional and he'll be ready to fight come September. And, okay. uh, but I think, and, and, and look, if Justin has to sit from May to, when did we start these fights? In May or April? May. That's not that long. No, if he Four has months. to sit from May to September, that is not bad for Justin Gaethje because that was no. still a tough fight between him and Tony Ferguson. I know he didn't get beat up like most guys do against Tony, but he needs to rest and recover, especially if he's going to fight the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. In my opinion, Habib is number one. Um, it, 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 it's not bad, but I think I, I just, I just believe that, like I said last week, I think if you put Nate versus Connor on fight Island, and then you somehow make the Masvidal versus Usman fight, you're good. I mean, that would be the fight for July, July 11. Masvidal versus Usman. That's the fight for July 11th because I think with everything surrounding the fight, it doesn't matter that there's not much time to build it or if they can even put a second title fight. I know it's good when there's two championship fights, but you got Edesanya in Australia. You got Volkanovski's gone. Um, what other foreigners the champ right now? Um, who are uh, – well, Habib, obviously. Habib's gone. Like, you have three champions that are stuck. They're gone. They can't get here. Right. So it's like – Zhang Wei Li's gone. Yeah, Zhang Wei Li's gone. So you have four champions that aren't available right now until Fight Island's ready to go. I think you put Usman Masvidal at the top of a card. That one fight is big enough to, to sustain that card. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.